Hi everyone, this is Coming to Peace with Science and I'm Daryl Falk. This is part two of the series, Genetic Change and the Origin of Our Species. In this series, we are considering two hypotheses. Hypothesis number one, creation from scratch, and hypothesis number two, creation through the evolutionary process. In part one, we tested a prediction that hypothesis two makes and compared it to what we might expect with hypothesis number one, creation from scratch. In this video, part two of the series, we test another prediction. First, however, a little background. DNA consists as a sort of code consisting, for the human body, of 6.4 billion bits arranged in a highly specific sequence. The units of the code are simple, just four different molecular components, adenine, A, guanine, G, thymine, T, and cytosine, C. Following the meeting of sperm and egg that gave rise to each of us, the code was transcribed and translated over the following nine months as our being was transformed from a single microscopic cell into a fully formed, unique human body. Throughout the ensuing decades, the code has continued to be read and has been needed to maintain all the processes in our bodies. In part one of this series, we saw that although the highly specific sequence of 6.4 billion bits of information inherited from one's parents is passed on faithfully to each generation, about 77 errors are made. In this video, we'll look at the nature of those errors a little more specifically. As we begin, let's consider a specific hypothetical string of code letters or bases. As we proceed, we're going to focus our attention on the C that is next to a G, the one shown in red. Notice that there are four other C's in this sequence, but the one that is next to a G is special in the way I am now going to describe. When a C is to the immediate left of a G, it changes, or mutates, at a much higher frequency. Indeed, by analyzing the DNA coding sequence of a child relative to her parents, such C's mutate at a frequency that is 18 times higher than the other C's. We know the reason for this. If you're interested in the technical details for that reason, two references are indicated down below. For our purposes, it is sufficient to tell you that the reason for this huge spike in mutation relates to an inefficiency in the repair process that kicks in when mistakes are made in the cell's DNA copying mechanism. The copying errors can't be repaired efficiently in this one case. The result in study after study is that when a C has a G on its right hand side, as we've drawn it here, the probability of that C mutating in a heritable fashion is much, much higher. With that as background, let's go back to testing hypothesis number two. In part one of this series, we trace the effect of 77 new mutations per generation, back generation after generation, into deep history, five to 10 million years of history. We found that the amount of change those 77 alterations per generation would generate is almost exactly the amount of difference that exists between chimpanzees and humans. Since independent fossil evidence has already indicated that this is when a common ancestor of chimps and humans existed, this is an amazing confirmation of the prediction of hypothesis 2, creation through the evolutionary process. Now though, we can make one more prediction. Since C's will mutate 18 times faster if they have a G on the right hand side than if they have any of the other three bases in that position, it implies that humans and chimpanzees would not only differ by a certain prescribed amount, as we showed in part one, but in cases where a C was next to a G, they would differ 18 times more frequently. So that's the prediction, but does it hold? Investigators analyzed about two million units of code and compared it unit by unit in both chimpanzees and humans. What they found was that where there was a C, there were on average 376 cases where that C was now a T, but only in cases where the neighboring code unit to that changed C had been an A, had been a T, or had been another C. If, on the other hand, the changed C had been next to a G, then in that case there was a huge spike. 6,770 cases 
where chimpanzees and humans differed. 376 versus 6,770 is an 18-fold increase in the amount of difference between chimpanzees and humans at just this one type of sea site, the one with a G on its right-hand side. This is in complete agreement with what Hypothesis 2 predicts if mutations, accumulating since the existence of a common ancestor, were the source of the differences. Hypothesis number one makes no prediction, but once more, just like in part one, it would require a terrific amount of ad hoc reasoning to explain how, by coincidence, it could accommodate the exact same numbers as those predicted by hypothesis two. So is God like an engineer or a computer programmer, assembling all the parts and creating from scratch? Or is God more like a parent, fostering the conditions for our species to fully develop into all that God intends it to be? In the chromosome two series, we had one video devoted to the question of what it means to speak of the activity of God if God is more like a parent than an engineer. The link to that video is provided in the description section of, of this video. However, in part three of this series, I will address this question in more detail by examining some of the specific factors contributing to our emergence as a species. As we do that, examine the specificities of our own emergence. What are the sorts of God-ordained forces that bring our species into being? In what sense is God nurturing our arrival as a species if we were created from an ancestral species? Indeed, if we were created from the exact same species that also gave rise to chimpanzees about five to ten million years ago. More on that in part three. Thanks for listening, and if you want to be notified of upcoming videos in this series, don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the little bell that ensures you'll be notified.